thought of the fact that God does not even care about you or God, God is not thinking about you. But the reality remains the fact that you are a son and God will never abandon you. Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read from verse 14 to 17. Romans 8 from verse 14 to 17. It said, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you will live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I said something earlier about the fact that you are, you are, you are your son. And one of the things that this scripture we read shows us clearly is the fact that being a son, you have access to security. You know, anything that will hurt my son will hurt me first. Anything that will hurt, anything that will harm my son, it will come through me. The same thing, being a son, having the understanding of the fact that you are a son, makes your mind to be settled on the fact that you are divinely protected. No evil is permitted to come near you. No plague is permitted around you. Why? Because I'm a son. I have a responsible father who cares for my needs. I am a son. I have access to security. You know, you might be asking yourself, how come uh, all these politicians and government officials go goes about with security? Why? Because they they, they, they they want protection. And that's the same thing we have access to as a son. We have access to divine security. We have access to divine protection. We have access to protection. You know, another thing that this... Um, portion of the scripture um, shows us clearly is the fact that if you look at um, verse 15, it says the spirit we received do not make us slaves so that we live in fear again. Rather, the spirit we received brought about your adoption to sonship. You know, part of the access you have as son is the fact that you have authority. You know, slaves and maids and I'm sure some of us have slaves. We have maids in our houses. And maids and slaves will only do the things they are told to do. You give them, you instruct them on what they, what they need to do. Oh, go and do this. Oh, go and do this. Oh, go and do that. But as children, you have authority. You can give instruction. You have authority. You have access. You know, what belongs to your parents, you know. That this thing is mine. Not because I'm begging to have access to them. Not because I'm pleading to have access to them. I don't need to lobby to have access to them. It's my right. I have access. Because of what? Because I came through them. The same thing. The scripture will read me because to understand that the fact that we are co here with Christ. Which means uh, we have access to everything that God has. We don't beg for them. We have access to them. And the only things like that are being said, said about you. And it's your responsibility to fill your mind with that reality. Don't let the devil deny you what belongs to you. Don't let the devil fill your mind with the reality of the fact that you are a slave. You are not a fullness. If the hurt and the fullness belongs to my father, and I have access to 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 his inheritance. <laughs> Everything, all things are mine. All things are mine. And those are the things that Christ died for us to have. And if we don't fill our mind with those realities, the devil will keep denying you what be eating. Praise God. So let's see First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 as well. First Peter chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, I'm going to read from verse 4. He said, As you come to him, the living stone, 
rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. Now verse 5. He said, you also, like living upon the hill that cannot be eaten, you are a solution provider. You are a solution in any city, society, or wherever you found yourself. You are a solution provider. You are not a problem to the situations of the world. You are a solution provider. And you need to start seeing yourself like that. Ritual house, which means people, when, when there are challenges, when there are difficulties, people are meant to come for to seek solutions. Which is, you have solution to the economic challenges of the world. You have, God sees the solution when he looks at you. You know, to the um, marital crisis going on around. And God looks at you, he sees solutions. You know, to the business challenges and to the problem in your place of work. You are that solution. You are that solution. You are that solution. And you need to start seeing yourself like that. Because that's, what, that's exactly what God is seeing. That's the demand that God has placed on you and I. The solution to the crisis of the world. The solution to the problem of the world. The so you are the salt. And you are meant to use your salt to provide solutions. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want us to see the book of 2 Corinthians as well. 2 Corinthians. I'm going to read verse chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. 